Hello, Happy New Year and Happy New Show. My name's Flick and I'm taking you inside Picture House. And where better to begin than the much-loved Clapham Picture House? Opening as a single-screen, 800-seater in the early 20th century, it changed hands several times before becoming a snooker hall, then closing seemingly forever. But in 1992, it was rescued, refurbished and reopened under the auspice of Picture House and in December 2017, celebrated 25 years of constant service with a day of exclusive previews, 8-bit games consoles, 1992 prices and competitions. It's great stuff, it's really buzzing. We're showing films that uh, no one, but no one's able to see but us and our guests and members. It's great to be here today, real privilege for us and everyone else involved. I think people like Clapham, partly because, uh, I mean, we get a lot of compliments about our staff. We have a lot of regulars that come in, keep coming back. We have quite a rapport with our customers and I think people just see it as a nice, cosy little cinema. Happy birthday, Clapham Picture House. Happy birthday, Clapham. Yeah. Director Alexander Payne, about Schmidt, Sideways, presents an environmental sci-fi comedy drama tackling overpopulation, climate change and the world economic crisis by shrinking people. So the decision to... Downsizing takes the pressure right off, especially money pressure. We live like kings. We're dying to move. We're really strapped. Paul and Audrey Safranek, Matt Damon and Kristen Wiig, sign up for the new miracle cure for the planet by undergoing an irreversible process that will leave them rich beyond their wildest dreams, yet with the most minuscule of carbon footprints. What Paul doesn't foresee, however, is that Audrey at the last minute changes her mind, leaving him to downsize alone. Alone, and that many people are still people. Christoph Waltz gives a star turn as Paul's new mini gangster neighbour. It's quite wonderful to be small, don't you say? I'd say it has its pluses and minuses. Early Man is brought to us by Aardman, who are of course responsible for some of the greatest stop-motion animation comedies and characters of all time. Morph, Wallace and Gromit and Shaun the Sheep to name but a few. Nick Park directs this latest feature which pits Doug, Eddie Redmayne and his simple tribe of Stone Age rabbit hunting cavemen against the evil Lord Nooth, Tom Hiddleston and his Bronze Age city. A star-studded cast including Timothy Spall as Chief Bobnar and Johnny Vegas as Asbo. Hognob, you stay. I don't want to attract attention. <laughs> Steven Spielberg directs The Post, a political thriller based on the 1971 true story expose of the Pentagon Papers. Do you have the papers? Not yet. Meryl Streep and Tom Hanks star as the publisher and journalist who stake their careers by collaborating against the government to publish the incendiary report that revealed not only the lies and corruption of four successive administrations, but helped end the Vietnam War. The legacy of the company is at stake. What will happen if we don't publish? We will lose. The country will lose. What are you going to do, Mrs. Graham? From the director of In Bruges and Seven Psychopaths, Martin McDonough, comes three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. My daughter Angela was murdered seven months ago. It seems to me the police department is too busy torturing black folks to solve actual crime. What the hell is this? A dark, violent comedy drama with a career-defining performance from Francis McDormand, Fargo, playing a seriously unconventional but grieving mother following the rape and murder of her daughter. 
After months of no arrests and seemingly no investigation, she takes on the dangerous, inept and corrupt police, headed by Woody Harrelson and Sam Rockwell herself. What follows is a fantastically foul-mouthed tour de force of a woman taking on the police, the town and ultimately men in general in defence of her daughter. This reporter, for one, hopes this finally puts an end to the strange saga of the three billboards outside. It doesn't put an end to shit, you This is just a start. Why don't you put that on your Good Morning Missouri Wake Up broadcast? It's claimed that you can't really appreciate 20th century art without understanding the significance and genius of Paul Cezanne. So, on 29th January and some extra screening dates, Exhibition on Screen brings us a wonderful film, Cezanne, Portraits of a Life, featuring interviews with curators from around the world and correspondence from the artist himself. This film will take you beyond the exhibition to the places Cezanne lived and worked and sheds light on an artist who is perhaps the least known of all the Impressionists until now. The Exhibition on Screen series has been astonishingly successful, bringing to life the in-depth stories behind the art. Le principe de l'exposition sur l'écran, je pense, est, est essentiel et il correspond d'abord à un besoin de l'époque, qui est un besoin de diffusion, de connaissance, et qui complète la mission des musées, parce que tout le monde ne pourra pas venir à Paris, à Londres ou à Washington pour voir les œuvres de Cézanne. Now, what to expect of 2018? Awards-wise, the Golden Globes kick off the year and are usually a pretty fair judge of what we can expect from the Oscars. The biggest festivals are all set to run at the usual times, Sundance in January, with a chance to see selected highlights at Picturehouse Central from the 31st of May to the 3rd of June. Get your VIP passes now. The Berlinale in February and Cannes, the most significant for Picturehouse fans, in May. Film-wise, expect another massive year for franchise releases. Han Solo, the hugely anticipated Star Wars backstory. But the DC and Marvel universes have three releases apiece. Jurassic Park reopens, and most exciting of all, The Incredibles 2. <laughs> From the rising star of distribution that is Picturehouse Entertainment, Custody, winner of the Silver Lion Best Director for Javier Legrand, and The Wife, starring Glenn Close, Jonathan Price, and Christian Slater. And the release I'm particularly looking forward to is Terry Gilliam's finally working Don Quixote into a film in The Man Who Killed Don Quixote. I'm Leah Byrne, I'm the Audience Development Manager for Bitch House Cinemas and I look after the community and education programme, so our schools programmes, our strands like Kids Club, Toddler Time, Autism Friendly and Dementia Friendly screenings. We started the Dementia Friendly screenings over a year ago. We decide on the films partly by talking with uh, experts like the Alzheimer's Society and local groups that we've been working with um, and we got some general feedback from them about the kind of length of film that would be suitable, what makes film quite a powerful tool for people living with dementia to engage and so we decided to try older films and musicals because music can be very emotive for people living with dementia and try to keep films down to about an hour and a half to two hours tops. A research project by the Alzheimer's Society said that more than 70% of people living with dementia felt un uh, unsure and unconfident and were less likely to go out as a result of that. So uh, it takes a little while to encourage people to come and try out the screenings and see that they can feel comfortable. And um, once they do though, we tend to have people coming every single month and really enjoying it and getting to know the other regulars, which makes it achieve exactly what it's meant to, uh, reducing some social isolation as well as giving someone enjoyment in the cinema. The Dementia Friends Initiative is a really important one. It's been started by the Alzheimer's Society and they're trying to get as many people in the UK to become a dementia friend as possible. I would encourage everyone out there to go and be a dementia friend. Um, you can go onto the website and uh, look and see if there's any sessions running in your local area or request one. And you can also do a kind of condensed version by watching a video and doing a few exercises online. And it's an absolutely fabulous initiative. So that's it for our first ever Inside Picture House. You can keep up to date on our website and of course our handy Picture House app makes it convenient and speedy to book tickets on the go. Of course, if you're a member, there is no booking fee, plus you get free tickets, discounts on food and drinks and a whole range of perks and benefits. Happy film viewing and see you again in February. Yeah.